The Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Up here he is. <laughs> This call for me. Okay. <laughs> now try to call you back. Tonight we have three public hearings to begin with. Uh, before we get into those, I would like to welcome uh, Village Board members Melanie Guerrero, Gary Phillips, and Jim DeSalvo. I'd like to welcome Lori Tortell, our uh, county legislator. And Brian, Brian's back there too. And Brian's here too. You guys got a quorum, you know. <laughs> but nothing. You're here first. So oh, all right, okay. <laughs> We're blocking the box, sorry. I didn't see you, Brian. <laughs> all right. Um, I would ask for a motion to open a public hearing on opting out of the establishment of a cannabis retail dispensaries and on-site cons consumption licenses within the town of Highlands. Do I have a motion? To motion. Open? Second. 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 Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, anyone like to speak on the opting out of the canvas law? Please step up to the microphone and give me your name and address. Fortunately, Mayor and Jim, there's some seats over here. Too. No, I'm good. Name is Joe Steer. I live at 40 Drew Avenue, right at the corner of Fort Buck Street. For those of you who know me or still think I work at West Point know I have retired. And because I retired, I have some time now to look at things. And one of the things I want to look at is this law. Now, you might tell from the shirt, from the hair, <laughs> that I've smoked a little weed in my time. Never while I was at West Point, but in my time. And now that I am retired and have the time to think about it, I'd like to do some more. And we have this situation where due to the peculiarity, shall we say, of ex-Governor Cuomo's morality, while he didn't mind grabbing people, he seemed to have a problem with legal pot. And so he put this little killer motion in the bill, all right? I'm sure you've all seen one version or another of the fellow with his finger in the dike hole while the entire dike has collapsed around him. That's where we are now, folks. Okay. We don't sell weed by the bag anymore. It's sold like this. Some of you are probably picking up the smell already, if you know what the smell is. It's sold in edibles. My one, my one weakness is chocolate. So this is good. Okay. All of these were purchased entirely legally next door to the state of Massachusetts sent down to me by my friend, who, as one of the 15 cars in the lot, pointed out to me that all 15 cars are from New York State. The people from Massachusetts were realized, don't go near the border, because the border has got New York, Connecticut, and Vermont license plates all over the place. All right? So the state of Massachusetts, which has already legalized all of this, and is drawing revenue from it. All right, now that we have Governor Hogel, she's got the board up, allegedly they'll be ready by the end of the year. This is New York, I give them six more months. Eventually, there will be rules and regulations, and this will be legally available. The idea that it is not legally available to sell in any one town or another is ridiculous. Newburgh, 
15 minutes away. They're rubbing their hands together. They've already said they will welcome these stores, these dispensaries. All right. I don't know, a lot of you probably have forgotten what the Time Star record looks like. This was Sunday's edition. Huge marijuana shops. Huge marijuana dispensaries and growing things growing in Warwick and Hamptonburg, Wallkill. It's here. You can't stop it. To pretend that somehow we can put a dome over the town of Highlands and keep it out, well, that's just ridiculous. All right? But let's talk some serious discussion. There's already a store in Highland Falls. They're waiting for this to become legal. In the meantime, they're selling all the accoutrements that go along with it, from pipes to wrapping papers, etc. All right, they are one of the two new businesses I've seen on Main Street the last couple of years. Uh, a quick survey. Okay, badly done, I drove, I didn't walk. We have 13 empty stores on Main Street, plus two in the town, on Long 218. That's 15 empty stores, all right? If the town, and therefore the village, assuming things go the way they go on the 8th of November, and the village and the town become one, you've just driven another st a store out of business. They won't be able to survive. When someone can go to Newburgh and buy everything that they sell, plus the flowers, plus the product that everybody wants, seems to want. Right? You know, guys? I mean, you've got nine bars, you've got four liquor, beer, and tobacco stores, you've got two liquor stores, right? All of these items sold are much more physically addictive than marijuana. Science has proved that. So we're going to do what? We're going to close our ears and our eyes. Okay? Well, if we do that, you're going to need this. Put on your nose. Keep the smell out. Especially, Rich, if you go out of your office on two, two houses down from mine, and you'll be able to, when the wind is right, ah, Joe's home. I can tell. All right, folks. Let's not be ridiculous here. Let's not have a time stamp on Highland, the town of Highlands that says 1950. All right? Let's just let the law be the law. And let's see what happens for a brand new business. I'm really hoping one opens up near the north end so I don't have to drive all the way down to Mountain Avenue. I'd rather walk down to, uh, you know, then I can stop at Pozo's and eat or Shades and then go home. That'd be great. All right? So it'd be great for all those tourists who were flocking to Highland Falls. Anybody see Saturday? Highland Falls was mobbed. Okay? Do you think some of those people might stop at that store? I do. All right? I thank the board for its attention, and I hope that you see it my way. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody who wants to look at this stuff is welcome. Don't open it until tomorrow, anyway. Until <laughs> tomorrow, drop by Corey Drew. Anyone else would like to speak on the cannabis law? Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> I didn't know I was going to speak on this tonight, but after that great presentation, I wanted to just add, like, we, in having conversations, I was suggesting maybe the board take a road trip and talk to one of the one of the dispensaries in Massachusetts, and they're great little towns, to maybe to see what the impact was. The one disturbing thing about it is the percentage of tax dollars that aren't going to come back to the community. But potentially, I said maybe, you know, traffic, more people coming into town. The stigma of marijuana, I think, has changed a lot. Um, I agree. I, these dispensaries are like the finest run. Uh, a drugstore or or uh, or a bank, and people take their product and they go on their way. Um, it's not like people are hanging out smoking dope on the corners like some movie. I think there is a, a look at the business model of it, 
and I think we could take the stigma and the old look at marijuana aside. I agree. It's the 21st century. Um, talked about maybe passing, saying no on the 31st and waiting another year. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But I just wanted to add, the, again, the stigma of, of, of the business. They are some of the most professional-run organizations I think you'll ever come across, and I still think, I agree, it's worth taking a look at. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Hi, my name is John Blanc. Uh, I'm from Fort Montgomery. Um, I think that that marijuana and all of the, they call them, I want to say, uh, uh, control substance one is what the uh, federal government calls it, category one. Uh, and it includes LSD and some other things, okay. And the federal government uh, says that it's in that category because it can be abused. Uh, I don't believe that that's a reason for not selling it here in the town of Highlands. But it's something that could, should be considered. As for any dollars that might come to us reducing our taxes, I, I, I have this thing about the lottery. You know, that was a promise made to us that the lottery would reduce our school taxes. Well, I've not seen that happen, okay? The money just goes and goes wherever it wants to go. So I don't believe there's really any monetary advantage for our town to have the establishments. The next question is, well, how many establishments are there going to be? If there are 12 empty storefronts, should all of those storefronts be selling all of the, uh, I want to call it medical marijuana. Is that not what we're talking about today? Is no, that? No, it's recreational. recreational. We're talking recreational. Okay. So I don't consider it something that we can recreate as long as the federal government st still deems it to be something that's bad. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of things that the federal government says about COVID. We pay attention to it. What we do here in the town, we're wearing masks. Other places don't wear masks. But yet we're saying we're gonna make an exception for cannabis. We're not going to go along with what the federal government says in saying that it is illegal. We have the academy right here in our town. I can only think of the 4,500 cadets that are inside the academy, how they may or may not welcome having the availability of cannabis here in their town, right outside their gate. I don't know how good a thing it'll be for them or for the academy. I, for one, do not support it. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Is there anyone else? My name is uh, Dr. Ryan Irby. I live over on uh, 17 Regina Road in Highland Falls. I've uh, been a resident for two years. Um, my wife Katie and I live there with my three daughters. Um, formerly I was a health educator in the Clarkstown School District, uh, four years at the middle school, four years at the high school. Um, after that, I, I went back to school, earned my Master's of Science in Health Science uh, from Ball State University, and then went on to get my PhD in uh, Health Behavior and Human, Human Development from Indiana University. Um, currently, I'm an assistant professor um, at West Point. I focus on character development um, and emotional well-being. Um, and so I just wanted to share uh, a few thoughts about uh, this idea of allowing stores in town to sell uh, marijuana recreationally. I have a bit of a different perspective than has been shared uh, thus far, but hopefully uh, it could help. It could be helpful. I do appreciate the opportunity 
uh, for each of us to uh, be able to share our uh, opinions and concerns. So there's no question that allowing it to be sold recreationally in town would bring in money for our town. Um, that seems like uh, a positive opportunity. But I believe that doing so would be uh, at a great cost to uh, our town. Um, <clears throat> I know one of the arguments in favor of that is that uh, it would be regulated. And uh, that's true to an extent. Um, and I think the argument for that also um, would leave, the idea anyway, is that uh, drug dealers in town who sell marijuana um, would then potentially move to uh, selling something else. Um, and I have a concern around that. I mean, I think if you're a drug dealer and you're selling marijuana <clears throat> and now it's legal in town, it's likely that you're not going to just move to not selling marijuana anymore. You're probably going to try to enhance your product or move to something else. Um, and I think that's, <clears throat> that's of concern. I think um, just to remind everyone that marijuana that's sold recreationally is not regulated by the FDA. Um, and you see potency of marijuana being sold recreationally in different states skyrocketing. Um, we're not talking about the same marijuana, the same THC levels that we saw even 10 years ago. Um, and that's concerning. <clears throat> I'd offer as well that THC is not a benign drug. Um, it's detrimental to uh, brain development among adolescents, and it's also detrimental to um, adult brains as well, uh, and other aspects of uh, physiology and health. When we think about the adolescent brain, um, impacts development, um, affects their learning, affects memory, um, affects motivation. Um, <clears throat> It affects other aspects of their brain as well. Um, and <clears throat> so with that idea, um, a recent study, actually that's been going on for decades, uh, known as the Monitoring the Future Survey uh, out of the University of Michigan, has demonstrated since the 70s that when perception of risk goes down among adolescents, their usage goes up. And that reality is driven by their social environment. If they see marijuana, cannabis, as socially acceptable, their perception of risk is going down. It's already been going down for the last several years. And we've seen that marijuana among adolescents usage uh, has gone up to levels that we've not seen since the 80s um, and the early 90s. And that's of concern. Um, so when we think about this decision, we need to think about <clears throat> not only ourselves, but we need to think about our young people, uh, the future of <clears throat> our town. Um, and I'm especially concerned about making it look more socially acceptable in the midst of a mental health epidemic among adolescents. I mean, this is, this is a major concern, what we're facing when we think about adolescents. And so making a drug more socially acceptable and more readily available to them, and I understand that they're not gonna be able to go to stores and buy it, um, but it's likely that it'll be more accessible to them. That's concerning, that's very concerning to me as a resident um, and a parent of young children. And I'll just share um, one anecdote as I close. So <clears throat> uh, we live you know, close to town and so on Saturday for the fall festival, I walked into town with my three daughters. And we passed uh, one of the stores in town that was already mentioned. Um, and just outside that store was a young person smoking marijuana right there by the street. I had my six-year-old, had my four-year-old, and I had my three-year-old with me. And the smell of the marijuana was potent. Um, and I mean, was visible right there and as i thought ahead to this decision in the future of our town i felt concerned i mean i felt concerned especially for my daughters uh what are they going to see what, what, what's their perception of this going to be now as a, a good parent i'm happy to have conversations with them around that um, but it makes it more challenging for us if it just seems like this is a socially acceptable and approved substance. And so I'll end 
with that, but also just a few questions. I mean, is this really how we want to generate revenue for our town? I mean, there's lots of other options out there. Um, certainly this is one, but is this how we want to do that? It's a drug that, because it is a drug, um, but it's a drug that's not really meant to promote the well-being um, of people. Now, I understand that there are, and I do believe that there are therapeutic uh, medicinal purposes for marijuana, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about recreational marijuana. Is, is that really how we want to generate revenue for our town? Now, uh, I'm happy to um, discuss these issues further. I've you know, mentioned my background. Um, I've studied this issue quite a bit, both in school um, and outside of school. And so, again, happy to discuss these things further. And again, I do thank you for the time and opportunity to be able to share uh, my thoughts. So, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, board. I didn't expect to talk about this tonight, but uh, just so to make everybody aware, the government has been looking to eradicate cigarette smoking for the past 20 some years. Uh, it's something that we inhale. It's something that isn't good for you. But now, because of the almighty dollar, they're looking to make money, just like they did way back in the day on cigarettes, uh, on marijuana. Now, I have nothing against medical marijuana. I think that's a good thing. But I think being out there smoking it on the street is not a productive way for our children. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Ray Devereaux from the Village. Uh, I think you have to personalize this. Uh, some of us, maybe in this room, have experienced within the family the devastation that it can take on young people. And uh, so I submit that marijuana, in my judgment, leads to other kinds of drugs, which could devastate a child for the future. And then thinking long term, I'm not a doctor. We have a couple right here and another. but. Uh, you think about the medical impact down the road to the, actually to the country. How are we going to treat all these people who, you know, have been using marijuana probably uh, and not well and, and I submit uh, destroying their lives. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Terry Carey. I'm also from Highland Falls Village over on Regina Road. And I also, me and my husband Roland, we have children here in the town and we love it. And I really back on what's been said regarding children. Uh, however, I had a couple of questions. Just, you know, I was looking up a little bit. I'm not a scientist and I'm not a professional, but um, just questioning just the value that it it will obviously generate income, but I'm wondering how it's going to affect home prices in our area. I know we've seen home prices going up. Um, I did a little bit of research. It, I was looking at one particular one, and it said that in Washington State, when they looked at homes across the spectrum, that obviously Washington State was one of the first states to legalize marijuana, um, that they actually saw within a 0.36 mile radius near a dispensary that home prices generally fell between three and six percent. So, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're obviously all trying to make it in our town. And so that was very concerning to me as far as when we're looking at it, it also affects, you know, home prices, homes, residential and commercial properties as far as how close you are to a dispensary. So um, in that respect, I guess, I don't know if the, ta the board has really looked at those numbers before. I, I'm not sure exactly even when the vote is, but if you are planning to look at some studies as far as how it affects the town in that respect, are we allowed to ask that question of you? Are you planning to look at like studies on how it affects homes and properties before we vote on it? You're asking each one of us this question? Yes. I wasn't, personally. Okay. 
I mean, it's just something to think about, right? As far as, is anyone planning on looking at some studies? I've looked at the okay. municipalities around us that okay. most of them have opted out. Yes. Goshen, Cornwall, I've looked yeah. at that, uh, some of those facts and figures. And I've read the, you have to remember what we're talking about here is marijuana is legal. Yes. It sounds like people want us to arrest the girl that was downstairs when I came in this building smoking no. marijuana right no. on her steps. <laughs> no, so that's yeah, not the issue. Legal. Yeah. The issue is a dispensary here. Yeah. And so I've researched that enough to be able to make a legitimate vote tonight. Okay. I have, yes. Okay. <clears throat> so is that something that everybody feels on the board that they have looked at as far as how is it going to affect our home prices when you look at how close you are to a dispensary? I can understand your concern about home prices. Right. Uh, have I studied it or looked <coughs> it up? No, I have not. Okay. And I've looked at stuff from the state of Washington and also the state of Colorado. Okay. So I'm personally from the state of Washington, you know, as a, a story, not fact. I mean, in the sense that it's just my personal story. Um, generally, what I saw when dispensaries came to Tacoma, Washington and the Seattle area is it seemed that, from my point of view, affluent areas generally voted it down and less affluent areas generally didn't. And when you would go through certain areas in Tacoma where the dispensaries really um, popped up everywhere, um, it was interesting because it didn't seem like it made those areas very nice. So what it did seem like is people in affluent areas would then just get their marijuana in these less affluent areas and then keep their neighborhoods pretty nice. So, um, <coughs> and I, I tend to, when I went to Colorado, once it was, I wasn't there because it was legalized, but I happened to arrive for a wedding when it was legalized and we were staying at an Airbnb. And so that also was a big thing. Like, so what people were doing is large companies or private <coughs> investors were buying up residential homes in towns that had dispensaries. And then you would just fly people in to those homes to, uh, you know, just have like a recreational marijuana party. But that would then mean that maybe your neighbor's house that has rented out is now just like a turnstile for people wanting to have marijuana and then leave. So, I mean, I find that really concerning. I mean, have you guys looked at anything about how that would be regulated? Would residential homes be allowed to be purchased so that people could come here and, you know, smoke marijuana and then leave? Yeah, you know, go back to just me personally. So okay. I didn't study Washington, I studied uh, Massachusetts and some okay. of the issues that they may or may not have there. And secondly, what, uh, like my colleague here, I studied uh, the law in the state of New York and how it pertains to setting up a retail store in local municipalities, because that's what we're talking about. Um, now, my question to anyone would be, uh, if we could compare and contrast alcohol to marijuana, do we see as an adverse effect mm -hmm. by the use of alcohol, particularly with liquor stores popping up in our neighborhoods? I'm just curious how you feel about that. Well, I don't. I think, um, from my understanding, alcohol is legal throughout the U.S., so it wouldn't be as a prominent thing for someone to come to your town to want to rent a house to participate in recreational alcohol. But it is something that people are interested in doing that, say, is not legalized in Pennsylvania. So let me buy a house or a property near. I'm not saying that this would happen, but it was very popular in Colorado when I was visiting that investors would buy homes um, because they're cheap in residential areas, especially maybe in the areas that aren't as expensive and or are located near a dispensary. It all kind of makes sense. So then you would advertise, hey, you could use this house as like come for the weekend and have fun and smoke marijuana. I do think, you know, obviously it's legal. We know that we're debating on whether we want to put the dispensary in our town. And mm -hmm. so I think that's the concerning part of this, is do we want this in town? How is it going to affect our homes and just, you know, the residential part? the value of your home? Value. And also, do would you really want maybe a recreational marijuana home next to your home? You know, it obviously has a much 
stronger presence than even just partying or drinking alcohol with the smell and the things yeah. that it brings. I guess I didn't necessarily, thank you for sharing that because I didn't visualize a dispensary or a retail store popping up in the neighborhoods per se because there are zones where you can put stores at. Right. Right, and so, so for somebody to put a dispensary that's the form of a house. I oh no, the homes aren't dispensaries. It's just the homes immediately close within a certain mile radius of a dispensary at first generally become more valuable for that purpose that somebody would want to buy it and say, hey, you should come stay in this house. You can walk down to a dispensary. Mm. You know, in your state, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Rhode Island, it's not legal, but here it's legal. You can drive here. You can spend the weekend here smoking pot and then leave. It might help your question to understand, and I'm not, sure. I'm not saying yeah. you don't understand this. What we're proposing here is for the town outside the village. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not including the village in this law. Right, but it's all within a no, certain mile radius, right? Yeah, right? So it depends <coughs> on. I'm just not sure if you guys had really thought about how it's going to impact. And from what I'm hearing is you've researched it a little bit, but you haven't really looked at any solid numbers on how does this fluctuate over time and imp impact residential homes. Is that right? Well, that's the reason that this per public comments, okay. right? So allow right. each one okay. of you all to come and put your presentations before us. Okay. So now we consider what you're saying. Oh, okay. Okay. I wasn't so sure if that was what was happening. This is my first meeting, so I'm just asking questions. So. Very good. Um, that's all the questions I have, I think, okay. right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Not to double dip, but my, my name is still John Blanc, but to address the question about the alcohol. Yes. Alcohol is not a Schedule One drug, according to the federal government, okay? Okay. Heroin is. So, so to me, in my mind's eye, well, why not heroin? Why not, why does now governor legalize heroin? I mean, the other thing is I never got to vote on legalizing marijuana. Hmm. I don't recall that, some, that that was on the ballot at any of the voting times I went, okay? A am I mistaking? Is it something that I missed? Did it go over my head? No, sir. Okay. And the last point I want to make I don't know what the problem is that we're trying to solve by saying that, okay, fine, uh, recreational marijuana can be sold within the town. I don't know what problems is trying to be solved. If you do know or if you have an idea what we're trying to solve in permitting it, okay, please let me know uh, because I don't see you know what we're what good we're trying to do thank you uh, just, just one second i'll call you uh we're, we're not trying to solve a problem or anything with this but the way the law is written on this uh opting out if we don't opt out before december the 31st we're in right okay I, I now if when we are in we can always opt out but once we're in, no. that's it. Have I got it right? Other way around. Other way around. Other way, Other way around. around. I'm sorry. Right now we can opt out. Right now we can opt out. After December. And later we could opt in if you should but choose to. But we can't opt to. out. But yeah, if you I was don't to say opt that out, right. Uh, by thank December you, Thank you. Yes, sir. A short comment. Uh, Ron Malco from uh, Highland Falls. Um, it was really interesting that uh, Cornwall is opted out um if stony point opts out central valley opts out there's a lot of tax dollars possibly here i don't know what the extent of the tax dollars to be made but if it's 25 grand a year 75 grand a year this is good revenue for the for the town that's it is there anyone else anyone else yes ma'am Richie, didn't you have a number on Hi, there? my name is Maureen Arias. Hmm. Um, from what I just heard, 
I don't care how much revenue you're going to get from these from taxes, savings, when it comes to marijuana or any drugs that are, even if it's legal. It's not going to be good for our families, for our children, for our community, for real estate, like Carrie said, um, Terry Carrie said, and um, all around. So Cornwall, Stony Point, they're going to just dump it all on Highland Falls or the town of Highlands. Give me a break. We've got enough bad stuff going on that we need to improve. Don't even go there. Please. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Okay, that's one public hearing. And if everyone is here for that in particular, uh, well, you can stay or go, but whatever you want to do. Uh, we will be bringing it up later on in the agenda uh, for a vote. Whether or not we vote on it or pass it or table it, we'll see when we get there. Um, the next public hearing isn't so exciting, if you want to call it that, for we, we have a basement that floods. And we need to fix it to the tune of $12,000. We have that $12,000 in the town hall reserve fund. Uh, we want to use that money, but we need a... Uh, resolution to authorize it so this is a public hearing on motion to open a public hearing on the town hall so move expender motion second all in favor aye. aye okay the floor is open to anyone that would like to speak on our basement and the twelve thousand dollars to fix it if there is no one i'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing so moved second all in favor aye, aye. aye. So carried, thank you. And the following public hearing on the agenda is a local law to override the tax cap. As I think most of you know, the tax cap is at 2%. Uh, that's 2% of the previous budget uh, you, you can raise. Um, the, in order to override the tax cap, we have to pass this uh, local law to override it. Uh, if not, and if we go over the tax cap, that money is held until the following year. We can't spend it. So let's say, for instance, we're uh, at round numbers, 100,000 over the tax cap. If we don't pass this law, then uh, we lose that 100,000 from the budget and it, it's uh, held over in the reserve fund until next year. Kelly, am I saying this right? Okay. Um, so anyway, I'll open a public hearing. Just, uh, just remind uh, everyone that it does not mean you will go over the tax cap. It just gives you the ability to do so. Exactly. Sorry. Exactly. Um, I'll ask for a motion to open the public hearing. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? So carried. Uh, just as a note before we start, uh, when we started our budget, I think it was two months ago, we met every Monday night for two months. And we started out with a budget that was $1,500,000 over the tax cap. We chiseled it on down to 70000 over the tax cap. Believe me, we've cut all of our departments, we've, we've cut budgets. Uh, we wheeled and dealed and figure out how we can, for instance, buy a police uh, uh, car without paying full price, without going out and leasing. We've done everything that I think we can possibly do, but we're still 70 some thousand dollars over the tax cap. Uh, so th that's why this law is important that we pass it. And we will be trying right on up until the 20th of, no, that, well, it, we have a public hearing on the 8th. Correct. We have a on the first, on the first uh, our next meeting after that would be the eighth. Uh, so, so we have time to change and maybe bring that seventy thousand dollars down. I'll ask anyone that would like to speak on this. Anyone? Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
Frank Lillis, Tana Highlands resident. Uh, is part of the reason that you're looking to raise the cap uh, because the possibility of the village being dissolved and then that means we have to increase the town taxes? Is that part of the reason? Uh, not at all. At all. Okay. No, sir, not at all. Okay, thank you. Hi, Jim DeSalvo, 50 Laurel Lane. What's the actual amount you can raise without going over the tax cap? Ballpark. Uh, let me go grab it. Okay. Because the 70 would be in addition to whatever you can raise it, right? Uh, oh, you mean the, the total budget? Uh, right. Uh, so if you can increase taxes by 200,000 but not go over the tax cap, but if you do 270, then you'd be over the tax cap, right? Am I saying that right, Jeff? You're explaining it correctly. I don't know the precise figure. Perfect. Once in a while, I, I explain things right. Frequently. <coughs> Oh, thanks, Justin. The tax cap is three million four hundred thirty thousand six hundred forty-six dollars. So you can increase town. No, no, no. The amount you can go over without. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. You, you don't. I don't need it for tonight. But I guess it would be good if the public knew, like, what you could raise taxes to without going over the tax cap. Because the 70000 would be in addition to that. Yes. And it's not really 2%. I know that. You guys get your hands tied. It's probably less than 2%. It's probably 1.4. But uh, just so the public would know. I, I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot at all. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. Anyone else? Anyone else? Jeff, there's a seat up here if you want. Jeff? Seat up here if you want. <coughs> Anyone else? Okay. I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Thank you. Now we go to the budget, uh, to, the, to the agenda. Is there any public comment on items that are on the budget, in the budget? On the, on the agenda. On the, what did I say, the bed? <laughs> on the, budget. the budget is going through my mind so much that uh, on the agenda, if you, if you have an agenda out there, if you have any questions or comments on the agenda, uh, please step up to the mic and if not, we'll move on. Okay, I have minutes from a meeting on September the 27th. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. I have minutes from the October 18th meeting. That was a budget meeting. Motion. A, a motion to approve? Yeah. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. So carried. Thank you. Communications. I received a uh, letter from the Town Clerks Association. Uh, on behalf of the New York State Town Clerks Association, it is my honor and pleasure to inform you that June Patterson, Town Clerk, has been awarded this association's certificate, certification as a registered municipal clerk. This prestigious award recognizes the professional competency of Ms. Patterson in fulfilling the responsibilities of her office. Certification is granted only after an applicant has demonstrated that they have met the stringent education and experience requirements established by the New York uh, Town, um, Town Clerks Association. June, congratulations. I received a bulletin, this is some stuff, somebody out there said <coughs> that if you don't get over a 5% raise, you're losing money uh, on your payroll starting next year. Um, now we're not talking about town employees, we're talking about in general. Now I got this heating cost expected to increase. Natural gas could increase by as much as 21% compared to last year. It gets worse. 
50% of heating expenditures using propane, 50% raise propane, and 40% raise for homes using oil. That's wicked, that's wicked. And again, we're trying our best with the budget because you folks have got this in front of you. So do I. Financial reports, I transferred into the paying account $86,048 to cover the check run dated October 21st. The big items are Royal Carding, $2,655 for sanitation. Uh, Edmonds Associates, $9,292 uh, for town software maintenance. Four Star Transmission, $2,300 for a police vehicle, the Chevy Tahoe. Global Montello Group, $2,129 for sanitation diesel fuel. Orange and Rockland, $3,412 for electric supply and delivery for multiple apartments. RBT CPAs, that's our auditor, uh, $5,000 for final work done on the 2020 audit. State controller, $7,396 uh, for uh, court collected fines and fees. Stryker Medical, $19,166 for an ambulance installment payment for a power stretcher. And Rockland County Solid Waste, $13,091 <coughs> for sanitation and landfill charges. Any questions from the board on those? Okay, board liaison reports. Council transfer. Did I skip transfers. something? Yeah, oh, budget transfers. Oh. Goodness gracious. Uh, I'll do it as usual. I'll read the budget. Budget transfer is out. Any questions, you can either interrupt me or, or catch it at the end. Uh, from personal services to police equipment, uh, $620. Equipment was over budget due to new computers. Health insurance to workman's comp. $520 workman's comp was higher than budgeted. From equipment to installment purchase pr pr uh, principal, th there was a, a wrong account number done, $25,503. And the, that was on a lease payment, it was in the wrong account. And $482 was um, f for the interest. So that was just a switching of accounts, no right. money involved. Ambulance insurance to ambulance supplies, $877 for a purchase of supplies higher than budgeted. Ambulance mandated medical expenses to ambulance supplies, $160 for the purchase of supplies higher than budgeted. Sewer serial bond to sewer contractual, $5,000 for sludge removal. Sewer utilities to uh, <coughs> The sewer's cell phone, $250, because the cell phone expenses were higher than budgeted. Any questions? <coughs> board? I'll ask for a motion to uh, approve the budget transfer. So motion. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Thank you. Now we'll go into liaison reports. Councilman Sullivan. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. So as I always report, the Zoning Board of Appeals is one of my liaison assignments. They meet on the third Wednesday of the month. They met last week. They've been meeting remotely, not in town hall. All that data is on the website. Anything they do is on the website so people can join into that meeting if they want to. Uh, I see Ray is here. I believe they had an applicant before them. I'm not sure if they set a public hearing for November at our next meeting. I'll let people know if they did. The planning board met the next night on Thursday. Uh, I was unable to make that also because I'm working at nighttime. I know Justin is their attorney. He was there. They had a public hearing that was continued on Pine Hills, which is across from the Patriot Garden at the entrance to Corbin Hill. That public hearing was closed, but they still have deliberations ongoing with that project. Is that accurate? Totally and, correct. And they meet here as per mass protocol and whatnot on the third Thursday of the month. Um, I don't have much report about down at the sewer plant. I did get a bill from uh, Debbie today for TAM for $5,000. As you all know down there, now that we have the belt press in, 
the grit that's being produced as well as the rags. You can't add that to the sludge anymore. So you have a container down there from Tam that is, we need to put out an RFP to get a contract going. They emptied it and I looked at a bill today for about $5,000. There's a girl out there that I call and argue with. That's what I'm going to start my morning with tomorrow is calling her to try and figure out what we can do with that. But we have the problem with before we could add the grit and the rags to the sludge when it was being disposed of. We can't do that anymore, so we're going to have to address that as time goes on. That's all I have to say about the sewer plant. <coughs> um, Rich, let me interrupt you yeah. one second. I'm not sure if you're aware, but... Uh, um, E e EFC has uh, allowed us to, to do that last project of burying the pipe so they can start in yeah, yes well. yes so the, I, I the, the change that. order that we had but, yeah. for fifty five thousand right. dollars that, that I'm aware of because okay. that's been approved uh, in the building department <coughs> like I can't say enough about Phil Hanwalt we're searching for a secretary Phil Hanwalt is down there on his own he's above water at the moment he's pretty much caught up with everything and here is September's report. 27 printed applications were received, 24 were issued, 12 COs were issued, one C, uh, nope, sorry about that, 47 building permit inspections were done, four violation notices were issued, uh, three municipal searches were completed. That number is not right, he did a lot more than that. One planning board application was received and three FOIL requests. So I don't normally read off what their fees collected are for a month. He was down there two Saturdays ago, spent the day there. I know Gene Tolman was helping him out, going through municipal searches. I think he completed all of them that he had done. So their revenue for the month was just shy of $10,000. It was $9,995, which is more than double what he normally brings in. And that's because he had the time to go ahead through and process all those municipal searches. So he's treading water now. That department is, is doing pretty good. And as everybody knows, we have a private consultant helping with some of the larger matters. And the permits ultimately go to Bob for signature uh, in that department. Uh, and let me see what else I might have. So I, I think that I'm um, short-winded tonight. That's it. Councilman King. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone, and good evening, everyone at home. I don't have a lot myself. I have a few things here, but I'll start off with saying that uh, that I really wanted to say uh, uh, thank you for to everybody who came out tonight, and particularly those who contributed to the previous discussion. And I thought it was uh, uh, certainly honorable on this community that that kind of debate could be had without anybody being. Uh, vitriol towards anyone else. So thank you all for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, clap for yourself. That's right. It's called civility, thank you. So recreation, I wanted to say uh, thanks to our director. As usual, he's doing a bang up job. I've been out to a few of our youth soccer games. Uh, the ones that played at O'Neill was there Friday night. And so uh, it's great to see that that uh, you know, wonderful field is being used by the community at large versus uh, just the high school kids. So, so good job to Aaron and all the parents and all the coaches that, that contribute to that. Uh, dial a bus. I want to say um, we, we got a great um, you know, person who came in and replaced Colleen, who was, was phenomenal herself. But then Tiffany's coming in, and uh, we're taking it to another level. So she's uh, been through a couple inspections already. It's going well. And we're trying to increase different uh, things that we can do for the community in terms of service, particularly the, to the senior citizens who use that, that service the most. You know, one of the things we're looking at is because is a lot of seniors ask me, could they go to, um, you know, across the mountain or, or go over to Monroe to, to go shopping? We've been down that road before. The real issue is drivers. We don't have the drivers to be able to do those things. It's not that we wouldn't be allowed to do those things, but if you don't have drivers, you can't do it. And so if we've got anybody out there that has the qualifications or willing to get them, we're certainly looking for part-time drivers for our dial -up bus. Uh, but good job to Tiffany and, and the team down there. And then the last thing very quickly would be the police. I just want everybody to know that we're still in negotiations with our police in terms of this year's budget and salaries and so forth. Um, you know, everything is going good in terms of their performance. Chief, tell the, the folks down there we appreciate what they're doing. Uh, heard a, I saw some, some emails about some recent things 
After you probably got somebody to identify tonight, but but I think those guys are doing a phenomenal job. Let's keep up the good work. And that's all I got, Mr. Supervisor. Councilman Sullivan. Perry. Perry. How about Councilman Perry? No, I know. No, I, again, just compliment the uh, sanitation and highway department. Uh, doing a great job keeping the community clean. Uh, I'm amazed when I go into the office early in the morning and seeing everything that's put out on the street. And usually uh, by nighttime when I go home, everything's cleaned up and pretty much done. Just remind everybody, if you have large items, please reach out and contact the town and make arrangements on when to put it out and when it'll be picked up. That's all. Thank you. As a model. Yeah, thank you, and good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to second um, and, and add to uh, uh, Ty's comments, uh, Councilman King's comments. It's great to see all of you here tonight. And the great uh, public involvement, uh, very, very good. Very civil, very civil discussion, uh, good public involvement. So uh, thank you all on that. Uh, I think if, if you didn't notice, I know those of you in the room know, but uh, you may not have heard that our Ambulance Corps captain is here. And so, Jeff, would you like to say anything about the Ambulance Corps? <laughs> okay, <laughs> took, the, took the words right out of my mouth. And Ryan... Uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to, um, and I know I saw a lot of people last weekend, a lot of you attended, but I thought the uh, Fall Foliage Festival was just very well done. And so uh, a thank you for all the good work that went into that. Nice. And, uh, and I think the community was, was very happy that that is back. So I, I think we owe the Ambulance Corps a big round of applause. And as, as Jeff said, while we're feeling really good about all that, we could definitely use some drivers. So, uh, you know, let us let us know about that. Then the final thing I have is uh, I've, I've uh, mentioned this a couple of times. I think I reported on it last month. I was hoping by this month I'd have some additional information on it. But it's the uh, electric transmission resiliency study that the county is doing. Uh, and uh, that's still um, going through the source selection contract award types of things so uh, perhaps next month we'll know who that is and what the impact of the local community is going to be for that too so that's all i've got for tonight thank you thank you um justin do you have anything nothing not on the agenda sir okay chief do you have anything for us good evening uh, very proud of the job that they did and once again this talk about part-timers came up and made me almost compelled to speak again. My folks are part-timers by hours. Frank, you're a part-timer, I'm part-time, both retired, 1,040 hours. My folks are trained no different than full-time police officers. They go through the same police academy. The police officers in the town of Highlands, some, something recently just came about saying that the town of Highlands Police Department is the only part-time police department in Orange County. It is, it's true. But we also supply 24-hour coverage. So where some police departments have part-timers and full-timers, they shut down at midnight. You can be guaranteed in this community there's somebody on patrol. We're not waiting for a unit to come from another area or another agency. You're going to have that one officer who's here in this community to respond. And I think it's important to bring that out because even my folks are tired of hearing that they're just part-timers. They're part-timers by hour because that's how they're appointed. And recently, uh, the 18th at 0200 in the morning, I received a phone call from both of our officers that work in our C and our D line. And coverage wise, that was two officers on patrol in your community. One would go off at a certain time and the other would continue on 0700. Officer Hill encountered a reckless driver on 9W at a high rate of speed, uh, instituted a, uh, initiated a traffic stop on the Palisades Interstate Parkway where he was finally able to stop the vehicle. Officer Kelly backed him up and the subject said, I'm driving reckless because I want to kill myself. So this subject is driving through your community and making sure that he either wants to kill himself or kill somebody else. So he's southbound on IW. Once again, our officers initiated uh, their mode of communication. They were to speak to that subject. And once again, somebody transported for mental health treatment. And I know sometimes folks say, well, I don't see the police. Well, a lot of times when you're sleeping, the police are out there. They're patrolling your neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think it's important. You know, we are no different than any other police department that has part-timers. Uh, if you're a full-time agency and you have part-timers and there's some local police departments that have more part-timers than full-timers, 
what is the difference if one of my folks who's part-time is patrolling and a neighboring community has somebody appointed part-time patrolling? There's no difference. It's police patrol. You and Frank, Frank and I, we've had conversations with both retirees about this. Okay, we support our people. But I think it's important, and you know, I was kind of compelled to speak about it because I want people to know that part-time is mean appointment. How many hours you can work a year? 1,040. Doesn't mean you're trained any less. And here was a perfect example of two part-time police officers interacting with somebody in crisis and solving that condition to make the community safer. So I just thought it was important to bring that up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to carry on with the rest of the agenda. Um, uh, Kelly, did you, did you have anything? Just the budget transfers. I did the budget transfers. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> All right, the cannabis law. I have it on the agenda for a vote. Uh, we don't necessarily have to vote on it tonight, and if we don't, um, we can uh, move it on to another time. However, I'll ask for a motion to adopt the local law opting out of the establishment of cannabis retail dispensaries and on-site consumption licenses within the town of Highland. Uh, I'll make a motion. I'll second it, then we can have a discussion, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, who made the motion? I did. I did. So I have a, a motion and a second discussion. Yes. Jim, you have anything to say? Or you want me to go first? Or? No, it doesn't matter. I have a couple of announcements okay. about it. Yeah, but if no, you want just, to go first. So, like, I'm going to be completely honest with everybody. There's people I grew up with here. I see Betsy's here, my classmate all through school, that know me, so I'm not going to tell any lies. In my youth, probably five or six times behind the billboard that used to be on the rocks above the Carstel, Car Carvel station in Fort Montgomery, <laughs> we'd climb up there and try and smoke pot. I tried it four or five times in my life. I never got a marijuana high out of it, okay? Uh, I wish I could know what that feels like. I have to go to work in a little bit. I'm a crane operator, heavy equipment operator over railroad tracks on a bridge we're taking down. I'm not allowed to have marijuana in the system for my job. I would just like everybody to focus on the fact that New York State is the 16th state in the country that is now legalizing. They haven't gone as far as other states yet. The regulation board has been formed, but they haven't really put together a lot of uh, material for us to know just what we can and can't do. So I'm going to come out and say that when the girl was downstairs and I was coming in and she was smoking marijuana, if you smell that, that is not against the law. You're going to have to get used to that. As long as they don't have, if they're 500 feet from the school, 200 feet from a house of worship or whatever else is built into that law. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think Highland Falls, for, well, Highland Falls is not part of this. I don't think the town of Highlands is ready for this yet until this regulatory board has put forth more information for us to go by. I've had people ask me questions about would they be able to have a lounge in these places for people to experiment with? So I'm probably, well, I can tell you that I'm probably going to vote to opt out at this time. I think a year from now, maybe we should think about opting in. And I'm going to say something that's probably going to get me booed, and that's okay. It's happened before. I think on November 7th and on November 9th, everybody in the town of Highlands could use a good hit of marijuana. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. Uh very good. Like my colleague, like my colleague, I, I'm going to uh, be transparent as well. So, so as a kid running around here in Holland Falls, New York, I probably tried it a few times too. But then I went to the Army for 30 years. And in 30 years, they said no. They said you're going to take a year analysis and it's going to be frequent and it's going to be unannounced. And if you get caught, you're going to get booted. So, so then I've had those two experiences. They don't sway me in this decision. I think what has, though, is this discussion between the community. Because I probably was coming here and, and in my mind thought I had enough information to say yes. Uh, but I think now probably the prudent thing to do is to opt out because then we have the opportunity later to change that if there is a demand by the community. So, so what I would tell people out there that really supports this besides the one gentleman or two that was here, then, then you should have came 
in, in major case because the rest of the community and by and large is saying to me that they don't feel comfortable at this time. Uh, I don't think though we have to, to stigmatize that. I don't think that we have to make people feel like they're uh, the boogeyman or something, they're dope dealers. No, this is a legal opportunity for some. It just may not be for some here in the town of Highlands. And that's my comment. I've always th thought it's been a good policy that when you have a public hearing that you take time to digest and evaluate what people have to say. So, uh, Richard, can't hear you. Is that right? So, okay. Speak up a little bit, please. Louder, Rich. Oh, okay. I'm just saying whenever we have a public hearing, I always think it's a good policy to take time to evaluate what people have spoken about. So my position is that I will opt out tonight, and maybe at some point in the future, we may opt in. But that's it. It sounds like there's already a vote happening here pretty soon. But uh, uh, I would, uh, my, my um, I had asked an individual from Orange County that has a lot of information to be here tonight. Uh, unfortunately, she had a co-worker uh, in her office uh, earlier this afternoon get into some kind of accident and she had to take care of that and couldn't be here tonight. Uh, but I do have some information. There was some discussion about, first off, I appreciate all of the uh, public comment about this. It definitely has had an impact on my feelings and how I'm going to be voting. Uh, I've been doing a lot of talking to residents, uh, soliciting their comments on a number of different topics, uh, several, to include at the fall festival actually, uh, several came up to me, uh, sought me out, and definitely expressed the opinion that this is something that we should opt out in. And I'm hearing that also from a lot of you uh, that were speaking tonight for a lot of good reasons. Uh, a couple of, couple of folks uh, have asked about the revenue situation. And so I'm just going to quote some uh, information that I had received from this individual from Orange County that has studied this a lot. Uh, that, and I'll break it down to a dollar. For every dollar of tax collected at an establishment, 20%, so 20 cents of that dollar is going to go, this is dictated by the law, by the state, 20 cents of that dollar goes to mental health, to a mental health rehab fund. 40 cents of that dollar goes to an education fund. And 40 cents of that dollar flows its way back to the community. Now, when I asked her about what does that 40 cents mean, so of every dollar that's collected in tax, 40 cents is earmarked to community. That's not just the local community that uh, after paying fees at the state level and at the county level, what was stated to me was that less than 1% of that tax dollar, less than one penny of tax would be coming to our local community. And uh, so that, again, that's not my numbers, that's what was given to me by, uh, by Orange County on that. So I, d I just wanna say, that I think the decision here is not so much a tax windfall as it is a lot of the other things that a lot of you were talking about in terms of as you know we're thinking about this. Uh, and so I am definitely in the, in the position of, uh, well, one final thing, it was, I think it was the 5th of October, the state uh, appointed the last person on the control board that this control board is going to be the one that's doing all the state laws and the or the state implementation of this law. So the state is just now getting their arms around it. I think Richie was talking about that and others. And I think the prudent thing is we need to opt out right now and we need to look and see what the state sets up. And to a lot of you that were talking and others that have mentioned this to me also, we do need to see where other, where other communities and other states what the success stories are and what they aren't. Because as the supervisor said with this law, you can opt out, but once you are in, you are in. There is no opting out. And so I, uh, again, keeping in mind everyone that was talking today and others, that, that's how I feel about this also. So thank you. Um, since R Richie and Ty gave a little history, 
Uh, I went to high school in the 50s, and we know in the 50s they talked about pot and Mar Mary Jane and all that stuff. I can honestly say I never smoked pot. In all my 80-some years, I've never smoked pot. I've never done drugs. And uh, when I was 17, I joined the Army, and prior to, to being 18, I never drank alcohol. Now I do. Now I do. I sure do. But, but what, I'm, what, what I'm trying to say is, is oh, and I, I did spend a tour in Vietnam where supposedly everybody smoked pot over there. Yeah, I saw it a lot and what have you. I still didn't. So I'm not trying to make myself as Mr. Good Guy, Mr. Great Guy. It's just my feelings as to why I'm going to vote to opt out also. It's my feelings that, that I just don't think it needs to be sold on the street corner legally or illegally. So anyway, we, we have, we've all talked. I, I just have one question. It has yes. not, it's not directly pertaining to this. So this is just the town outside the village. Yes. Does the village have to act on this also, or have they? Uh, they have the same deadlines okay. by the state. They have they act. acted on it yet? Okay. We've been bogged down a little bit. No, so just when people hear about storefronts and whatnot, our decision tonight is affecting no storefront in the village of Highland Falls. In Fort Montgomery, you have your establishment. You have the elementary schools within 500 feet of you, so you're not going to be selling it anytime soon. 200 feet from the House of Worship. There aren't a lot of places in Fort Montgomery that are going to fall into the category of eligibility. I don't feel as if we're hurting anybody at this time in Fort Montgomery. Not at all. No. I know we represent everybody, but we're not affecting. The vote doesn't pertain to the village of Highland Falls that we're making here and now. All right, the town board has discussed it, and uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Sullivan, Councilmember King. We're voting to opt out. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. Councilmember Perry. Aye. Councilmember Modlin. Aye. And Supervisor Livesey. Aye. Okay, the town board of the town of Highlands, after due deliberation, finds it is in the best interest of the town to adopt the said local law. Democracy has worked. Okay, we spoke about the $12,000 to fix our basement. I'll ask for a motion to uh, move the resolution to authorize expenditure from the town hall repair reserve fund Repair uh, for basement repairs in the amount of twelve thousand dollars. Motion. Roll Council call. Aye. Council Member King. Aye. Council Member Perry. Aye. Council Member Modlin. Aye. Supervisor Lindsay. Aye. Tax cap override uh, a resolution to adopt local law to override the tax levy limit established by general municipal law section three C. Do I have a motion to move the resolution? So move. Motion. Okay, second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Sullivan? Aye. Councilmember King? Aye. Councilmember Perry? Aye. Councilmember Modlin? No. And Supervisor Lizzie? Aye. Okay, I, uh, I just want to bring this up to, where did I put that? I received from the Department of Army uh, a copy of a license with a whole bunch of numbers granted to the Town of Highlands for the utilization of an the antenna array on Tower 2 on West Point government-owned property. This license is granted for a term of five years beginning June the 1st, 2021 and ending May 31st, 2026. Um, the only cost to this license would be the utilities if they charge us for the utilities. It's up to the uh, office that's in charge of the tower. I don't imagine that would be very much for, for electricity on top of the tower. Um, originally they wanted $5,000 for this and uh, Colonel Hansen, Hansen? <laughs> No, the, the, uh, not Hanson. Who, who was the one? Cecil. Marson. Yeah, Marson. Um, 
he, he arranged for us to get it for utilities. So that's very nice, and I thank West Point very much so. Uh, that's used by our emergency services as a repeater tower. Okay, I have a resolution to relevy the 2021 sewer charges in the amount of $45,572.86. Um, this would be relevied on the uh, tax uh, for next year on the, the uh, state and the town county tax. Do I have a motion? So move. Motion. Second. All in favor? No, Aye. not all in favor. We need a roll call. Council Member Sullivan? Aye. Council Member King? Aye. Council Member Perry? Aye. Council Member Modlin? Aye. Supervisor Lindsay? Aye. Now here's here's uh, something strange we can uh, contribute to, or attribute to uh, the COVID. The water relevy is on call. Um, on hold, excuse me, on hold. Uh, the Orange County uh, real property people uh, called today to tell me to hold the water relevy. One of the emergency orders issued in response to COVID is that unpaid water bills cannot be relevied, but that order is due to expire towards the end of December. The county is waiting for guidance from their legal counsel about whether or not municipalities can relevel. It only applies to water. So uh, that old COVID is still getting to us. Uh, not on your agenda. I have a request from, <coughs> excuse me, from um, our electrician that did the work at the uh, sewer plant. Uh, he did uh, 32, I mean, uh, 6, $147,344 worth of work. We retained uh, from that amount $32,694.98. He's got the whole job done, it's finished. I've got a, a performance bond and a guarantee for, from him. This is Ray S. Pantel. Uh, I have every, all the proper paperwork, Justin looked at it. So I'll ask the town board to allow me to return his uh, retainage. I'll make a motion a second. I'll, I'll make a motion. Ty, you're blinking your eyes. You're, you're following what I'm saying. No, I probably need you to replay that for me. Okay. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to digest it. Well, he did, the, he did the whole job down there for 647394 uh, uh, what we do is we hold a, what was it, a 3%? Okay. What do we hold that? 5%. Okay. We hold 5% five, five of that money uh, as a retainage uh, to ensure that he did the job right and right. it will last for a while. Okay. Uh, we talked about this before. Uh, then. Well, we, but, we but then he. We need to hold it since we have a performance bond. Correct. He's a substituting guarantee. a performance bond for the actual cash. It's okay. very typical okay. methodology yeah. and yeah. Okay. protects so the town. I a second by time. Yeah. Just a quick discussion now that we have a second. So I want to make sure, Justin, that in the next calendar year, from whatever the date of substantial completion is, that if something goes wrong, this mechanism will allow us to hold them accountable and come down there and stand by the product installed. That's accurate. Okay, then I'm good with it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we previously had some discussions about this. Right? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. General public comment. If anybody has anything they'd like to speak to us about, now's the time. Hello, my name is John Block, uh, Fort Montgomery, Wyatt Road. And uh, I have two things. Uh, first is a question, has there ever been any discussion that I might have missed in reference to cell phone towers in the town? Um, any discussion? We are, let's see, how can I put it? There's been no real discussion other than the fact that we have Verizon uh, wanting to put a cell tower at the town garage site. Okay. 
So uh, I, uh, I toured two sites. They're outside of the town. One is in Bear Mountain at their, uh, the hotel, I th think you call it. Uh, Overlook Lodge. There's Overlook one right up there Lodge. next to it. Right. So uh, AT&T is new. They went ahead and threw up uh, some antennas there. Uh, they're supposedly going to give additional coverage to our area, uh, possibly at the beginning of Route 6 on the Palisades Parkway. And then, of course, it'll go down south also. Some of that might come over in our direction, especially in Fort Montgomery. Again, it's AT&T that I'm aware of. I'm not sure if it's been lit yet, but, but they're there. The second location is at Anthony Wayne. Anthony Wayne is a brand new uh, facility that AT&T set up there. And I know they went ahead and put in some electric and they also put in some generator power. So I'm passing that on for information. And I understand that West Point is also still working on, on 293. And they've been, I saw them running some wire, uh, Lake Frederick, I'm not sure how they're <laughs> making the connection. But there's work being done around our area as far as the cell phone is concerned. So just to let you know that. The second thing I wanted to mention, the lights, the, the new, uh, not traffic lights. Yes, the LED lights that we have that were installed in various places in the town. And I do understand the idea that it was less of a cost, less electricity and everything like that. However, the intensity of the lamp, there's one specific one on Wyant Road. This thing beams right into my eyes when I come down Wyant Road and there's a dip there and before I go up, that light <coughs> hits me in the eyes. I cannot see what's coming down that road. It's like somebody shining a, a headlight at me, okay? <coughs> I don't believe that that was the intention of putting those lights in so that they were would overpower somebody's vision at night okay I believe there may be some way to mitigate that situation possibly by putting a little shade on it in the direction where it's beamed down on oncoming traffic because I'm thinking that they only want to light up the area of the road not to shoot into the eyes of the driver so either that or to replace those high intensity bulbs with something with less intensity. <coughs> I've seen the same bulbs at West Point. They don't do the same thing to my eyes for whatever reason. Okay. So those are the two points I wanted to bring I up. I would love to answer that one. <laughs> sure. May I? Okay. Go ahead. So that project never went forward. Okay. Okay. That project was Article 78. -ed. It was appealed and it's been perfected since then. So that project has been held up. We never signed a con. We never did anything with the New York Power Authority. The reason I wanted to do something was to save money and have control over what gets installed. Uh -huh. Those lights are not metered. You are charged 4,320 hours a year, which is half the year, the hours in a year for street lights are not metered. You're charged by the wattage. So Orange and Rockland has a program where they replace all burned out lights uh -huh. with those lights. Why do you think they're going to do it in order to charge us? They're going to put the maximum wattage that they can. So I would be happy to contact them on that light, but we don't have control over that. They're doing whatever they feel like doing. Right. We hope to have control over it had that project happened. I'm going to tell you that project's probably not going to ever happen at this point. Okay. So, so that is nothing so to it's do. Not the town. Nothing to do not with the, the town. town. Okay. The town has Got no it. control over that. Got it. Okay. Okay. And 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 the the real strange part of all that <coughs> is that by the houses further down on Wyant Road, there aren't any street lights at all, much less an LED that shines in your eyes. Zero street lights. Reason: all of the electrical stuff is buried underground. And I guess that's why they never thought about it when they ran the electric wires. They weren't run through the air, okay? Mm. So anyway, so I appreciate that. Oh. Uh, a general <coughs> comment. Um, 
I too salute the highway department and the people who pick up our uh, recycle and everything. They do an excellent job. They come on time. They don't make a mess of things. They, that my previous place where I was, I was in Virginia and they used to make a mess when they picked up the trash. A lot of it would fall off to the side of the truck and everything. That's never, I've never experienced that with the highway department. Same thing in the winter time. They come by and they clean our road and we never have a problem getting up Canterbury Hill. It's always clean, it's always dry. I mean, they do a super job in, in everything that they do. So I appreciate that and uh, please pass the word on to them. Thank I would appreciate much. it if you would get me the telephone poll number. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Yes. I'd okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. You can call the town clerk up and see okay. if you can get it. All right, I'll pass that on. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Ray? Ray Devereaux, Village. Uh, maybe Kelly has the answer on the number debt of issued uh, debt, issued debt, including bonds and bans. Do you have a ballpark number, Kelly? No, I'll go get the actual number. I'll go get it. Okay. <coughs> That's all I have, Bob. Okay. To do. Anyone else? Well, Good, Brian. There. By the way, while we're waiting for Brian, uh, our what, what we want to call it, our our uh, our budget, not our prim, uh, preliminary budget, is is was posted tonight online. So if anyone would like to look at the budget, it's online on our website. With yes, Brian. No, that's all right. My name is Brian Elwood. I'm the village trustee. I'm also president of the board of directors at the center. Uh, it came to my attention, I got some phone calls that people are asking that the IRS be called because we are supporting political activity. The sad thing about that is that I have the policy in front of me and the policy states that if the board or any members, the board of directors, support a candidate, give money to a candidate, go support of a candidate, go after a candidate, not support them, then you're interfering. We have not done that. We have none that, never done that. Did we have candidates there for different positions? Yes, we did. And when people were running for county legislator, there were two candidates there talking. We present people with facts. That's part of our mission statement. Now on the bottom of this intervention section 501, it says here, if you're setting up educational activities, presenting forums, which we have, and registering voters, which we have done, we talk about the school budgets coming up. Please vote. No one says vote, vote it down or vote it up. We say please vote. Second, we've already told people, please vote. If you're not going to be here, get an absentee ballot. Now, if we did the things that were stated, then we don't deserve to be a private nonprofit. But I can guarantee everyone here, we have never done that. So I would suggest this craziness stop. <coughs> and what I mean by that, it doesn't matter whether you're anti or pro. Attacking people on Facebook, attacking family members, saying things that aren't true, the scars are going to be here for a long time. Let's stop. I'll give you some examples. Frank Lelis, I was speaking to he and his son about an I was speaking to them about an issue. I walk away and somebody says, oh, you're with the police? I guess you're anti the solution. Please. It was something completely different. I'm at the farmer's market. I'm talking to a guy who's got his truck plastered with signs. Oh, I know how you're voting. Well, we were talking about education. This madness has got to end. This is craziness. Families aren't talking to each other. I know how his 
her husband's going to vote. They're probably all going to vote like that. Well, that's not true. It's not even logical to say. Let's stop going after people. It's getting to be ridiculous. Public comment, anyone else? speak very well to it. There was a neighbor that was going to be here from Franklin Street. And it's it's actually, I substitute in the school and I talk to a lot of parents at the speeding. Franklin, spe uh, Franklin Street seems to be an issue. <laughs> now I know when we talk about speed bumps, the illegal speed bumps that they put out, uh, the gradual speed bumps, I know there's issues where see people say liabilities with um, mufflers and things like that, that they're going to come back to the town. I don't know how to address it. Again, this isn't my lane to be in, but it is a huge concern. Parents are really upset up there that there's a, there's a big issue. And I know we've had police officers there. I've talked to them. And they say that they're there and, and they don't see the speeding. I've spoken to Tony Scicciarini. And he said, you know what? Yeah, actually, it's probably not as fast as you think it is. But it is fast when your children are out there. And there is some kind of adversarial thing where people say, well, you should be out with your kids. Well, they are out with their kids, and that's why they're seeing this. So again, I have no idea how to solve this problem, but it has to be addressed somehow. Because it's in the village, too. The, the one street in Franklin, though, is the one that's been brought to the attention you know, openly. But again, if you guys can kind of have that conversation and we can kind of rectify that or find a way to rectify it. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Have the chief heard everything? Well, we got the chief there. there. So. <laughs> and, uh, any time that the town, uh, via, uh, sometimes a Facebook message or a phone call, we monitor that location for a minimum of 30 days. So I can assure you, start, start tomorrow. And I can't predict the time of the speeders. Yeah. But for 30 days straight, there'll be a patrol here on Franklin Street. We'll evaluate the speed and the time. But I also encourage folks to call. They say, hey, listen, Silver Toyota, for example. Yeah. And our officers will be on the lookout for that. We did that on Firefighters Memorial. We do that on IW. We do it in any location that someone brings up. So it's a minimum of 30 days. So I'm going to show you that off tomorrow. Thank you. Because sure. I think the concern is, too, with the Pine Hill project, that that's going to really kind of exacerbate the situation. So if we get something in place now, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Good morning. Yeah, I just want to tell the community that, you know, reference to these speeding reports, again, until we get that information, we may not know that that's happening. So just look at, uh, what's the road by you, Fire Marshal Road? We heard that there was a bunch of speeders going on there, and we put the patrols out there, and we kind of reduced that problem. I personally even went out there several times, and I think this street that you're talking about, I've been up there as well, because yeah. this may have been a problem a summer ago or so. Um, so, so yeah, just bring it forward. And, and then what's going to happen is what he just said. So well, thank you. Know, but you're on it. Thank you so much. Very mm -hmm. Good evening, board members. Um, I know it's a town meeting, but people that watch this meeting also live in the village because uh, we're a community. Uh, and there's just a couple of things I got to say. Um, so this flyer has been mailed out again uh, to the residents with misinformation, in my opinion. Uh, and it appears that this flyer was penned out even before the interim study was made public before the presentation last Monday night. A strange thing happened at that meeting on Monday night. The village board was in the process of having the interim study presentation on what the potential, and I do stress potential outcome of what can transpire should the vote on November 8th be to dissolve the village, you know, and as far as any tax reductions. So the presentation by the LaBerge group was showing some of the possible savings. But in my opinion, it was at a cost of lost services. Yeah, lost services to the residents of the community. But it appears that is the price the residents are going to have to pay to have any possible reduction in taxes. Lost services, lost safety, lost jobs, lost identity. Is it worth it? Personally, I say no. Remember that study emphasized appropriated funds from the New York State uh, people in Albany to see these savings, and that is if the bureaucrats up there in Albany see fit to appropriate the funds needed for the CETC tax credit. Um, we all know that you know we've been fighting the federal government as well as the state government for money for many years that was promised to us. So when I calculated based on this flyer, my village tax, because the flyer says my potential savings, should we get the CET money, is 29.2%. So my savings would be approximately $393 a year at the village level. That equates to saving $1.07 a day 
to not have a village police department staffed by full-time officers. And I'm not, look, I think the part-time officers are great in the town. I had a flat tonight on 293, and one of them showed up like that. And he had the flashlight out there so I could make it here on time. Great job by your officers, sir. Just remember, sir, part-time is uh, dictated by I, Doesn't mean you won't have coverage. No, and I totally agree. Okay. Because if you read my letter, you know, there's two different things that are needed in the town and the village. And what's working for the town right now works well. Like I said, tonight it was moments and all of a sudden there was an officer there. Now, did somebody call and say I was broke down on the side of the road? Maybe. But they were there like that. So, look, you guys do a great job. And I agree with that. But, um, but to not have, you know, local 24-hour day dispatch, which would also be part of that savings, um, I believe is a vital instrument in having a safe village. Uh, and then what about the village assets? Again, in here, in this flyer, it states that these assets are going to still stay with the village. Assets that, cons uh, considering assets which our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and our children have invested in. Yeah, the children who have chose to come back and live here after they went off to college and experienced other places. You know, where does that go? I believe it's not worth the dollar and seven cents a day to lose our identity or our safety. You know, also in that study on Monday night, it was noted that all the costs, not all of the costs of owning property in the village, or for that matter, the town, was shown in that study. If you look at the lines in Executive Summary Table 2, there for water and sewer, the lines were zero. Zero on the village lines. And there was no lines even shown for the town. So is there going to be any savings at all in those two areas? We don't know. Uh, you know, looking at the flyer again, other possible misinformation. Hey, Robert, isn't this a town board meeting? Yes, sir. Why, why give him the, the air in order to... Because we, we, we've we listened to everyone and I have yeah. no problem. Yeah. Right. Again, so with the uh, Bog Meadow issue, um, it states that that asset's going to stay with the village residents should the t village dissolve. So I'm kind of lost why it says that, because does that mean with the three dams that we know that we maintain as the village, if that asset stays with the village, then would the village residents and only the village residents in the new district be responsible for repairs on that? A question I don't know, but it would be nice to have an answer for. You know, um, it's just sad and that things like that aren't fully looked at. So, you know, what was really alarming and I believe is inexcusable was during the presentation when the whole ball of wax actually began to melt. And Mary Jane even noted it in the newspaper uh, when uh, the, one of the councilmen said that, you know, he was like to consider a full-time department police department, that is, for the safety of the residents. Again, it's something that needs to be talked about, Jim, and I understand. I understand that. But that was the only place in the study was the ditch dispatch and the police department where the big savings was going to really come from, along with the CETC money. So, you know, a lot of this is flawed, um, and I just hope that we can all see beyond this because we all have to live here together. We have to live here together. You know, we don't deserve to have trickle-down information presented only when the political winds shift. And that's what happens. And you know that, Bob. You've been around for a long time, and you see every election cycle. That happens. You know, and it's unfortunate that, you know, the residents are held hostage to that. And we shouldn't be. We should be more uh, open and more transparent. You know, so... Um, Last but not least, I'm not running for a town council. I'm not running for supervisor. But I hope the people, when they do win, take this into consideration. That you need to really think outside the box on shared services. You know, you need to work with the village. And seeing that some of the town departments have taken over some of the village departments, that was great. Consolidated services. But, you know, we could probably do that at a cost saving for town residents as well maybe by looking at departments in the village that could take over some of the, and relieve some of the taxes that the town residents pay. So I would hope that the councilmen up there now, or whoever wins, or supervisor as well, 
take these things into consideration. Bob, I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Joe. Right? Okay. I just wanted to uh, speak on, on the police department again. Uh, uh, I know the chief spoke here. And like you said, there is no difference between a part-time and full-time officer. Uh, in, in essence, that's where we are, police officers. Uh, they have many fine officers down there. The chief is a great guy. He has a lot of experience. But there's a reason why, there's only, why they're the only part-time department in this uh, county. It doesn't work for many places. They're great guys, they back us up many times, we will back them up. They're great guys down there. They're even, their PBA recognizes that we need a full-time department. They've made a donation and support us on a full-time. Mr. Marlin uh, said at the last uh, village board meeting that uh, we need a full-time department, or he supports full-time. Uh, and in this flyer, the phony flyers that went out again, one of the things says down in there, they says, full-time police officers. In the LaBurge, uh, LaBurge group said they based it on speaking to you about having part-time officers. This flyer says full-time officers. So they, they, it's, it's not correct what's in here. And if you do add full-time officers, uh, they said basically there'll be no savings. So why would we dissolve the village uh, and take away uh, the, the you know, the uh, department that we have there, the fire department, DBW, everybody, uh, if we're going to add on full-time officers in the town. It's going to raise the town taxes, and we're going to be back in the same position we are. Uh, I had a question on some of these things that they put in the flyer. I don't know if this was discussed with the town board or, or who said this, but they said out of 25 current full-time village employees, 17 positions will be retained. It says chief waste water plant operator, two wastewater plant operators, wastewater man, uh, maintenance uh, worker, chief water plant operator, water plant operator, mechanic, five DPW workers and laborers, highway foreman, full-time police department, administrative clerk, a county clerk, com uh, controller assistance, and deputy town clerk. Is that things that you guys already voted on? So this Nobody's is. Nobody's never talked to me for a record. Nobody's never talked to me about that. So I, I don't know. So this is from. is not correct. Where does it come from? Yeah, this I'm is. Uh, I'm speaking right now. Excuse me. So it's not correct on things that were put in there. So uh, these are not things that were even talked about on the board. So to me, it's it's phony. It's not even correct. And again, it's not signed by anybody. So I ask the the town board now. Do you guys now support a full time department? Like I said. Part-time officers are great. They you will know. great to assist us, but with a full-time department, you get officers that are there, that's their career, that's what they do. Part-time officers, they may be painters, they may drive a truck, they do this part-time. Not saying that they don't know what they're doing, but with full-time department, you have detectives that will follow up on cases. So if I'm in today, I might not be again in for another two weeks. So if you have a burglary at your house, or if you have another issue you need to speak to me, you may not have seen me for two more weeks. So I gotta pass on to another part-time officer who may not know all the details that went on. So I want to ask the board, do you guys support? Let me, let me say something. Sure. Uh, speaking for me. So so the first thing is that document there, I'm not disputing the accuracy. I hear your point. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's another one. All I'm saying is I was not in the discussion about those things. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, in regards to police, since I'm the liaison. So what I know about our police department, we're not talking about guys who are painters and all this other stuff, though that's some honorable careers. We're talking about guys who have retired from one force and who in some cases have multiple jobs with other forces, but they can only work up to a certain amount of hours. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So they could be working here, they could be working over in Wallkill somewhere, but they're part-time officers. But not many of them are retired police officers. Well, I mean, that's the, the younger ones that we've hired, and maybe not, mm -hmm. but we have several that are. You know, they come from New York City police officers. You know, they come from various places. So, so I just want to make sure the public is not swayed by your statement that made it seem as though, I know you didn't intend to do this, mm -hmm. that these guys were some kind of ragtag outfit. They never said the that they're good guys. I will tell you, the chief, in front of the chief, they're great guys. They work well with us. I'm not putting down any of their officers. They do a great job. Okay. Um, 
to address Mr. Ramos. Do you know how many part-time officers in the village, sir? There's a mix, and we have full-time. Let me finish, we, sir. We, you okay. have more part-timers you have, um, than you have full-timers. If your part-timers work a midnight, a day tour, and then a sea line, just all part-timers, are they any different than my folks, sir? Absolutely I'm, not. So, if I can just respond. Sure. I never said that your part-time officers were bad officers. I never said that. And I, and I didn't mean to But you're saying full-time services. The town of Highland, sir, receives full-time police service around the clock based on part-time officers. There is no different deci decision-making in any police department because my folks are part-timers. And I'm going to defend them because when something happens at 3 o'clock in the morning here, some part-time departments who have full-timers are shut down. At 3 o'clock in the morning, my folks are coming. They might work part-time hours. They have full-time service. There is nothing to debate. You were talking about full-timers versus full-time service. Safety will not suffer unless you eliminate something. Okay? My folks are very well trained. Believe me when I tell you, we spent four months on our police reform plan. We had a police reform plan ready to go on time. We took it very serious. Nothing against what Frank says, because Frank is retired. I'm retired. But I think, I might think my credentials are enough to say that I'm not a house painter. Okay? My folks are not house painters. They might be somewhere else, Sorry. but it doesn't matter. It's the dedication and the commitment they give to the community. And they would give it if there was the, it was dissolved or not. I don't live here, okay? So I won't dictate policy about dissolving or taxes or anything. But I will tell you, this community is just as important to me as every one of my part-time officers that serve here. They wouldn't be working here if they didn't take it serious. So you can't say the good guys to back up, because in this county, there's two line of duty deaths and two of the smallest police departments in Orange County. So we can't predict who's the best backup. We predict what's the best service. Whatever that flyer says is one thing, but I'm telling you now, full-time is full-time employment. Full-time protection is what you get here in this community, and it's not going to stop. And Chief, you know... No, wait, wait, wait. Okay, and, and again, no disrespect to any of his officers. They are fine officers. Uh, only thing I say, the part-time may work good in the town on a small amount of people. Part-time, totally for the whole village in the town, will not work. We need some full-time officers to follow up on cases, to do our investigations, to do that. So that's my only thing. And uh, no disrespect, again, their officers are great officers. I work with them all the time. They back us up. We do whatever. We back them up. No disrespect to them. I'm just saying, when you do full-time, like the chief did and I did, anything you do full-time, you're going to have better experience. That's, that's a given. There's a reason why. New Windsor's not part-time. I worked in Peekskill. They're not part-time. But it's great to supplement them, but you still need some full-time officers. That's my point. And, and I just asked one last question because the vote is coming up November 8th. I know that. Do you guys support? Or have you guys discussed? I don't discussed? Make that vote, so should I make an assertion? Say that again? I don't get to vote on that. I don't get to vote on either. Neither does Bob. No, but as a town board, if it, came, if it came, if they did dissolve the village, would you guys support having full-time officers on the town board? Would you, from your town board, I know already Mr. Mollin said yes, but would you guys support having full-time officers? Yeah. That's my this, question. I'll say yeah. this. My, okay. What I've Thanks. done is listening to the debates, paying yeah. attention to what the, the, the developments, and then when the time comes for us to make that decision, I'll be ready to make a decision. Okay. Yeah. But right now, I'm not ready to make that decision. Okay, gotcha. But my, my big thing was that this was a flyer that was out that, uh, that had all these things about how many people were still going to retain. You guys never even discussed that. That was Frank, my point. Be before you sit down, sure. should the vote go yes, mm -hmm. and the dissolution is going to take part, within six months' time, the village board has to put together a plan. Mm -hmm. If in that plan they're going to try and keep their full-time officers, full-time police department, then that's something for us to look at. Mm -hmm. But until we get to that point in time, there's no sense in answering yes or no. Yes. Because we have to see what kind of plan the village is going to put out. I understand that, Mr. Lindsay. That, uh, that's, that's absolutely true. The problem is that people are going to vote on November 8th and really don't know what's going to happen. If they vote to dissolve, then it's done. Excuse me. Then it's done. So it's nothing against any of you guys. I mean, obviously, you make a decision after it comes. But the problem is that you vote November 8th for the village residents. And again, I don't vote. I'm in the town. 
and they don't really know what's going to happen after that. I know there's got to be a plan drawn up by the village, <coughs> got to be brought to the town. So that's just my point that none of this was correct. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Could I, could I just inter interject one thing? Since my name was mentioned a couple of times, I just want to clarify one thing that uh, the comment I made was that I need more information as you all, as I think is obvious by the discussion uh, that we're having so far. My, can you all hear me? Can you hear me? I'm getting signals that Better. you can't hear me. Better? That uh, the comment uh, that I made last week at the uh, town board meeting was that, or village board meeting, thanks. At the village board meeting was that one, there had not been a decision made by the town board that a part-time, a full part-time uh, police force made up of part-time police officers, that decision had not been made. That was a comment that was stated by the person who was um, briefing. So I wanted to make sure the public that was listening understood that the town board had not made that decision. And then also the other point that I made that I was speaking for myself as someone who would be ultimately voting for that, that I would like to have more information about what makes the most sense for the policing of the entire town. And, it, and I would be interested in, and I, I haven't totally ruled out that there may be a need for a full-time officer. I'm, I'm thinking on a supervisory, supervisory perspective, but that's just me. That's just my opinion not having managed a police force at all, not being a police officer, having managed other kinds of teams and the need for good supervision. But that's just my opinion. I would need to talk to Frank and our chief. I would need to talk to folks in the village. I would need to talk to other people that I have been talking to that have a lot of different opinions about what is the right thing. And one thing that is certain is that I would want to ensure, as I think everyone on this board would want to ensure, is that the police force is the right police force for this community. It's not, it's something that uh, is going to be professional, something that is going to be what we can all be proud of as we are currently. It's not anything that's bloated. It's not anything that is anything at all other than what this community deserves. And so that's my opinion, is I, before I can cast a vote, when that time comes, and, and the supervisor's absolutely right, when that time comes, I am going to be seeking information. And I hope we have an opportunity, I hope the town board has an opportunity to work with the village board on this. That, uh, you know, if the vote is yes for dissolution, that is up to the village board to put together a dissolution plan. And I really hope, and I know a number of the trustees are in the audience here and really appreciate you being here that I hope that if if that does happen that we do have an opportunity to work together on this because one thing I am convinced is that we're all trying to do the right thing we may be looking at it from everyone may be looking at it from different perspectives but we're all trying to do the right thing for the community here okay so Mr. Marlin, thank just you one thing on that. the LaBerge group was based on the special events of Lindsay that said that it was going to be maintained as a part-time and that's where the savings were coming in. Mm. So that's, you heard him say that that was based on a discussion there. So we're talking about the savings, that's where the savings were yeah. coming from. Yeah. And I, I personally, I, 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 I like the, I like their study, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as I've been talking to people, I have been referencing folks back to the New York State law, and since the study has come out, uh, back to uh, the LaBerge study. And so yeah, I think they have a lot of good good data. But what prompted my my comment was the comment that in in something. In fact, I wrote down in discussion with the town board. Well, there wasn't a discussion with the town board. And I just wanted to make sure. Well, yeah, and and and, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that 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 point was clear. Thank you. Uh, let the supervisor say one thing. Uh, the the, the first study said that they talked with me and I approved the chief's plan. I didn't approve or disapprove his plan. I received his plan. They 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 kind of got mixed up on that, and they also said that I sent them an email. And I, I've been back to them twice asking, could you please let me see the email that I sent you? Because I know I didn't send them any email. Right. So, so 
again, it's very <coughs> important to understand that the chief did give me his plan. I didn't approve it or disapprove. LaVerge wanted to know if I received it. That's all they wanted to know, and that's what they got. Dr. Soto, there was some confusion there. Which, uh, oh, there was confusion there, yes. Something comes yeah. out to at least let the village yeah. residents know a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Jen? Trying to get back to the suit. And I'm sorry, Mr. Supervisor, but yes. the plan has adequate patrol function. <coughs> As well, so, adequate patrol function, okay. adequate supervision. Right now, we might not have a demand for detectives. Let's just say we take over the area. We might have a demand for detectives. Mm -hmm. So that's something we have to do in the planning stages. And that's brought out in our police reform plan as well. Secondly, you're almost telling me now that you will never hire another part-timer in the village? Absolutely, no, of course we will. Why? Because they serve a purpose, correct? Absolutely. And so do my folks. Yes. I want anybody to know yep. that. Around you the might, clock. You know I know that. They serve a purpose. 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 They we both come up full, from a full-time background and I understand what you're, you're concerned. I have a son that's a full-time police officer as well, but the bottom line is this. This is not about personalities. When we say full-time, we're talking about service, whether it's service by part-time police officers or full-time police officers. I'm very proud of the men and women at Tata Highlands Police Department. I think they do a great job and they're just not there for backup. They're there for every day of the work. I didn't, like I said, no disrespect to you. I know. They do a great job. They do. Mr. <laughs> DeSalvo. Uh, uh, I just wanted to just make a comment also about Brian's uh, comment that he made. I, I appreciate him, and this is why this man is so well respected in the community. I feel the same way. I'm not going to stop talking to people. I may have a disagreement with her or him or this, but I will speak to anybody in this community. We can all have a disagreement, but the stuff, again, that's on Facebook is ridiculous. And I hope even after the vote, we're still able to come together and still be the community that we are. And I thank Ms. Howell for this time. Hi, uh, Jim DeSalvo, trustee, Village of Highland Falls. Um, just out of curiosity, Kelly, did, did you uh, get that number for the yeah, levy so that you can raise? What you were asking me was um, how much we can go over the, we can. Before you go over the tax cap. It's about 67000 so 67 plus the 70 would bring you over the tax cap? Yes. Right? Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and I just want to echo Officer Lelos's comments uh, and Mr. Ramos's comments and some of the other folks that commented here tonight. It's definitely tensions are high. Uh, tensions are high because we couldn't rely just on a study that was done by professionals. Uh, we had to rely on information that was put out there. And I go back to the simplest examples because we, we could talk about part-time police office uh, department versus a full-time department. Again, nobody in this room is questioning the professionalism, dedication, and service of the individuals who are on the duty, at those doing those tours. Um, but, uh, you know, we go back to this comment. I, I've heard it and seen it 50 times, 50 times since this started. The village of Highland Falls has $8 million in debt. That's a falsehood. That's a complete falsehood yet I can find it on probably four to six of the pieces of paper that have been mailed out to this community so that's why the tensions get high because it's misinformation it's saying putting something out there stating it is Bible but then it's not so I understand why tensions get high and I, I understand why sometimes misrepresentations <coughs> are made so my question uh, mr. supervisor who I've known for a very long time and for, in fact we ran together when I first started to run in 2002 how did the LaBerge organization that was hired come to the conclusion that that was what the town was going to provide in the study? There had to be some kind of correspondence, whether it was a phone call, whether it was a meeting, whether it was a mysterious email, whatever it was. They didn't just dream up this scenario that was presented on the 18th of October. Chief, I, I think they got a hold of you, yes. Sir? No, no, from the LeBird study. How did they, how did they come up the with... Study, just police. Just police, because that seems to be the topic. Right. I spoke to them. Okay. Now, so. here's it. Let me finish. In my plan, which I propose, which whether happens or doesn't happen, it gives you police officers around the clock. I understand. The same amount of manpower that if you took your part-timers working in the village and the part-timers working in the town with supervision as well. So you don't have around-the-clock supervision right now in the village, and we don't have it around in the town. My plan in the busy times has supervision, okay? So I took the amount of hours that I think that we need. We have a scene at D-line. Sometimes we have more cops working in the town than you have in the village, sir. 
And you know, sometimes that happens. Someone calls in sick, and they communicate well. So my plan was this amount of bodies to patrol to the plan. And as I told them, I do not dictate any policy on hiring full timers or part timers. That's not my job. I understand that. But I gave them that study. Perfect. Study. I'm not. This is a lot of time on it. No, no, no. I, this is not. I am not here to question <laughs> the actual information that was given to the Laverge group. I just want to make sure that it was given. That's all. Yeah. That, that, that's all. I'm, that's schedule, it I, I saw the schedule. Ample patrol with supervision. Not supervision seven days a week. Seven no. Seven, it would be on certain shifts. Not. <coughs> this, this is why I didn't want. To, I don't want to get into the Do nuts and bolts. We have supervision right now around the clock. We have sergeants on the weekend. Around the clock. We have sergeants on the weekend. I'm asking, sir. I said around the clock. In the plan, is there supervision on the weekend? No, but you don't have it now either. We so do have it on some shifts during the weekend. Some shifts. We, we you have, have it on zero shifts. I'm the supervisor. And so is it on the weekends? Shift? I'm on call. Yes, sir. On call. Okay. I, I don't, Chief, I, all due respect, I don't want to get into the nuts and bolts because it's probably... I think I know police work, sir. And I you do, that. sir. I by do. far, you do. You do, by far. So, Much more than I do. Senior, my senior man on patrol, maybe he doesn't have stripes, she doesn't have stripes. I, but I count them as the officer in charge. I just want to address the board. Just I don't want to get in an argument. No, I, I apologize. I, I just, I'm you trying. You apologize. I'm passionate about my phone. No, you, and you do a fantastic job. I'm not questioning that. My, my, my point is, is that the LaBerge group got the information from somebody on the town board. From the chief. Okay. Directly from the chief? Directly yes, from sir. the chief. There was no interaction with the LaBerge group <laughs> as supervisor. Yeah, they asked me if I got his plan, and I said yes. That's the total interaction between me and I did a Zoom call with them, and the deputy chief was aware as well. Okay. That's the numbers and I just you were on, I'm trying to get, make hay of this. So just you were on the call? Nobody else was in the room with you? I don't know if the deputy chief was over, but there was no town board members, if that's what you're flying to my So no town board members in on the call? And then, no, absolutely not. Okay. And then what I did was I gave it to the supervisor and said they'll be sending it over. And okay. it's not impossible because, as I say, I don't dictate the hiring No, I understand that. I'm just going on what the, the plan that I think I'm about. just going on what the proposal was. That's all I'm going on, Chief. It's, it, 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 believe me, I understand that. Perfect. That's all I wanted to know. Because at the meeting on the 18th, we got kind of thrown a little extra curveball. So I'm not going to reiterate it because <clears throat> it was just talked about tonight about now maybe the potential of having a full-time supervisor. So on in the police department, you heard that, right? That wasn't was I miss did I misunderstand that as well? I don't know where. But it came from the folks who would be dictating the policy, correct? Or setting the budget. Okay. Anyway, my point is, is this thing keeps changing. So if we could just go off of what the study's actually saying, and if the town board, in a formal manner, wants to change anything in that between now and the eighth, please do so very rapidly, so we can stop with these flyers that give you some information and not all the information. It's ridiculous. Please. Hey, Jim. Hey, Ray. It's a town board meeting, Ray. I'm a town resident, buddy. Last for a motion to adjourn. I'd like to know what the village. That is 4.3 million, bud. Motion. I'd like to say something, if I may. Oh, My name is Maureen Arias. I live at Row Park. I was at that meeting as well, and I didn't hear what's being said by Mr. DeSalvo right now, I, or, or even what's on the flyer. It does not say full time department. It says full-time department administrative assistant or something like that. I don't have it in front of me. No, read it correctly. It does not say that. Okay. Continue it. Continue it. You're not reading it. But anyway, anyway, so they're, they're misconstruing a flyer, number one. Number two, what I heard Mr. Maudlin say, and you can record and maybe I'm wrong, why don't you watch the video? But what I remember it being him saying, he just stood up that they were open, the town is the one that, town, the board makes the ultimate decision, and that they were open to all possibilities, just like I just heard from Mr. L uh, Livesey, saying that it's not a determined done deal yet, that the town has to put together the plan, they're gonna be open. So I hear that. I believe the safety and protection of the community is paramount to everyone. So rest assured on that. And that's what I understood right now, Mr. Lipsy, saying that it's still not all done until the plan's done. So don't worry about it. Thank you. A motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion. Well, can I, wait, wait, can I motion. I have a motion to adjourn. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Bob. 
Kelly's got some figure storage. Excuse me. I, I'm, I'm presiding over this meeting, and I just asked for a motion to adjourn. We got it. I got a, I, I got a, a second. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye.